I've wanted Primaris Dark Angels in robes since I got back into the hobby, and I think we can all agree that Inner Circle Companions look cool as hell. So personally, when they announced these models on Christmas Day, I couldn't be bothered to wait for them to actually get these things out. I decided I was going to make one myself, and he can either function as a captain or as a spare model when I inevitably steal one of the bodies to kit bash an Ezekiel. The main thing color-wise that sets them aside is the armor and the robes. So the primary focus of this video is to detail how I painted both of those, and then at the end we'll quickly rush through all the other details that I did before we reveal the finished model. I primed my model Chaos Black and I got straight onto all of the cloth, the fabric. So the cloak is Screamer Pink. We also did the tabard at the front, the same color, the hood and the sleeve, all in Screamer Pink, and that is how it looks after that step. Next, I wanted the inside of the cloak to look a little bit darker, a little bit different. So I used Rhinox Hide Brown and basically colored that in exactly the same, made sure that it was nice and even. The next step is sponge on a stick. If you watch my how to paint cloaks video, you'll know all about this method. It's the same method as that video, just with different colors. So here I'm going in with, I believe, Screamer Pink and just making sure that there's nice even coverage across all of the cloth. I don't care if this pink goes on the black armor. We're going to retouch the armor up anyway later. Once that step's finished, it should look a little bit like this. And you can see a slight variation on the Rhinox Hide section. Next, we're going in with uh, Druki Violet, Druchi Violet, I'm not sure how you say it. It's the shade paint, it's the purple shade paint. Uh, and that's going across all of the fabric again. And once it's dry, it'll look a little bit like this. The next step is once again, sponge on a stick, this time with Emperor's Children, I think it is, the uh, the brightest pink when Games Workshop typically recommend doing three layers of pink. It's whichever one's brightest, and this is what it looks like by the end. For the final step, to really make it a nice burgundy and make it a little bit less hot pink we're going in with Sigvald burgundy this is one to one with some water just to make sure it doesn't pool too thickly and it gets nice coverage across all of the fabric and instead of Sigvald burgundy for the inside of the cape I'm using shyish purple contrast it's a nice deep purple by the end, it should look a little bit like this. I should say the Shyish Purple has a more contrast than water in its mix. Then we go in with Abaddon Black and I've cleaned up all the power armor just so that we've got a good base to work from when we get around to doing the armor itself. And now I've added some highlights to all of the fabric that is once again Screamer Pink followed by Empress Children Pink. Getting onto the armor, we're starting out with a nice chunky highlight of Eshin Grey. I want this to be nice and thick. I want it to capture quite a lot of the armor plating because at the end of this process, we're going to be glazing all the armor plating in a dark green. And so anything that is kind of gray gets pushed back into the armor anyway. So this can be quite nice and chunky. Next, we're going Dawnstone. So already we're on classic Ravenwing colors. Uh, Dawnstone, a thinner highlight once again, all over the entire armor plate. And once again, don't worry too much about messing this up. All of the greys and all of the highlights are gonna be pushed right back into the armor when we glaze it green at the end. You can afford to be quite heavy with this if you want to be, but if you want nice dark plating, try and keep it thin. Next, we've gone in with Administratum Grey. This one is a thinner highlight once again. After going around all of the armor, here's how it's looking so far. At this point, it should really start to pop. But to make it pop a little bit more, we're gonna use Ulthran Grey. Ulthran Grey, whichever one it is, we're gonna use that just to catch the very tops of our highlights. Only the places that would be most exposed to the light and corners where armor panels join together. 
After we finish that one, one last highlight. This is White Scar, and we're using this literally at the very corners where things join together uh, and dot highlighting other sections of the plate. This is going to be our smallest highlight yet um, and the one that is going to pop the hardest at the end of the whole process. And here's how he looks after all the highlights have been finished. At this stage, we want to be creating our glaze. So I went for a one part Dark Angels contrast to eight parts of contrast medium. I would recommend this consistency because you're able to apply multiple layers and you want the color that you're adding to be nice and thin so that you don't overdo it and kind of delete the highlights that we've just blocked in. After looking at the Inner Circle's artwork on Warcom, uh, you might want to mix in a tiny bit of like blue or turquoise because I think their armor is a little more of a turquoise green than Dark Angel's green. But if you like the colors that I've done, this is how they're going to look when they're finished up. Next, I'm just using Mechanica Standard Grey to block in a bunch of details. So the chest crest is going to be grey and we're going to build that up to white and the ropes are going to be grey and we're going to build those up to a light grey. So they're going to look similar, but we're going to do some highlights just a little bit differently. Once the grey is done, it should look a little bit like this. I've taken the liberty of painting lead belcher on both of the sensors and the backpack details as well. And then after we've added some Retributor Armor Gold to the shoulder pads, the sensors, and the little crest on the waist, we're left with this. This was difficult for me. I would recommend not actually doing this step unless you have a very steady hand and you've practiced on something else first. This is quite a fine brush. Uh, I could have used finer, to be honest, and white scar just ever so slightly thinned with a touch of water. And this is going over the hood and over the uh, tabard to just create those decorations that we see in the artwork we've been provided on Warcom. And once that's done, it'll look a little bit like this. At this stage, I've put some Reichlin Flesh Shade on all the gold details and a little bit of null Oil on all of the silver details. And we're just using Auric Armor Gold to add some highlights to the Retributor Armor Gold. It should look a little bit like this. Next, we're taking Stormhost Silver uh, we're using this to highlight both the lead belcher details and also just the very tops of the gold details that we've done just to create a very nice bright finish on that gold. I've taken some Corax white and I'm using this to do the purity seals on the character. Uh, I usually go for more of a kind of uh, skin or parchmenty kind of tone but the Inner Circle Companions seem to have very kind of white, pale gray uh, purity seals, so Corax White's the way for this one. And I'm using Apothecary White here just to get the gray detailing in on the purity seals. Once I've finished with the Apothecary White, I've gone back to the Corax White to just add some more white to the raised details so it's not also gray. I've gone back to Mechanica Standard Grey and I am just going to paint all of the sword blade here. And whilst we're waiting for that to dry, just back to Sigvold Burgundy and just do the wax detailing on the purity seals. Now, I know that not everybody has an airbrush, so I apologize in advance. Uh, because of time limits of getting this video out on time, I decided to do the sword with an airbrush just because I have one. So I've gone for Black Legion and Administratum Grey to basically get the darker and the lighter points on the blade. And this worked really well for me. If you don't have access to an airbrush, 
You can achieve a similar result with glazing. There are so many videos by fantastic painters out there that will teach you how to do this kind of method. So I'm sorry for that, but like I said, I really needed to crack on and get this guy finished. Once the sword is done, it looks a little bit like this, and we will take the same administratum gray, and we're just gonna use that to highlight the edges of the sword and also the center of the sword, the sort of the groove down the middle of the blade. At this point, we can go back to Retributor Armor and just do our details on the sword, just to add a little bit of color. And uh, we can add some details to our purity seals with this little pen. This is how I do it. I refuse <laughs> to use a brush because I will not make them look very good. We might have missed a few details on the way, but unfortunately, I am really in a rush. I'm proud to present my Inner Circle Captain. This was a really fun project for me. Uh, I really enjoy the colors. What I would say is if you don't want to do my method for the power armor and do all of the grays and then glaze over the top, I'm sure that people will be coming up with really good recipes for these very soon, if not already. But the artwork looks an awful lot like the standard Drakari colors to me. That would be working from a base of black, maybe going up to Incubi Darkness, followed by Cabalite Green, Sybarite Green, and maybe even Gauss Blaster Green at the end. Sorry that this one was a little bit of a rush. Thankfully, I managed to take my time with the really important details, which are, like I said, the armor plating and also the robes. I hope this has given you some inspiration and I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.